Hey everyone, today we'll be forecasting housing prices with Meta's profit model or package. I'm not exactly sure what the correct terminology is here, but um, yeah, we'll be getting some data, some real estate data from Zillow using the NASDAQ data link, and then we'll be using profit to forecast the next six months of the housing market. thought this would be a good idea because I keep seeing a lot of videos on how the housing market is going to collapse any day now. So one thing that we can do is with Zillow, it has three different tables. So we need to get the indicators and they've got a ton, as you can see here, but we're interested in the single family home time series. And we can see that the indicator for that is Z SFH, and oddly enough, they have the Zillow Housing uh, VI. So I'm guessing that's index or something. But when, but you can see we have a ton here. Um, if you were interested in, say, like uh, the homes in the top tier or condos, they also have uh, you know median sale prices, smooth, seasonally adjusted. So that'd be interesting. Rentals, that would be probably a good one to look at because it's seasonally adjusted. And MetaProfit tends to work better with data frames that are uh, seasonally adjusted and have seasons to them and, and whatnot. But uh, I thought I'd give it a try. You'll see the outcomes. It's, it's pretty interesting, I think. So the next thing we need to do is call regions. So it's not enough to just get the indicators because then we would get indicators for all over the all over the map, but we're really just interested in certain regions. So there's different types of regions that we could call. If for some reason they put the entire United States under the metro region type, uh, which is interesting, I guess because there isn't a country region and it wouldn't really fall under state. So uh, we need to grab this number here and then to get the data, we're gonna call the data table with the corresponding indicator and the corresponding region. And that will then down or yeah, call that link, call that data. It's going to come in dates of descending values. So we need to sort that so that we're going from the oldest date to the most recent date. And this is the data frame. So we get the indicator ID, the region, the date, and the value. We don't need the indicator or the region. So I just drop those and just keep the date and value. And then I set the index for a date. So when we do that, we can plot it and we'll get something like this. So this is the time series. You can see back in the early 1990s or the late 1990s, excuse me, it you know is quite quite low down here. This would be a wonderful housing price. Um, but as you can see, it comes up and then you can see this is where the 2008 housing recession crash came and it started to tailed up again around here around i guess this would be like 2000 maybe 11 or so and it's just skyrocketed up ever since and you can see it's sort of got a weird um a weird sort of signal over here so this is what we'll be trying to forecast is this last this last little bit here to see how well metaprofit can capture this odd bit of uh change in our in the housing values so now that we have the data all set up, we can just start MetaProfit. I'm just gonna, for simplicity's sake, I renamed the columns of the dates and the the uh, the values to for DS and Y. So we're trying to predict Y, and we're gonna arbitrarily choose to use the last quarter of the test data. Uh, that's just 2019. I don't know if it's literally like in a quarter in a business sense, um, but that's where we're gonna set it. So we're just going to set the train indices to only include those less than this date here. And then we're going to set a variable of our train to the location of those indices. And then we're going to set a test variable using the location of the training data that's not included in the training indices. And that'll be our test data. So our test data will look something like this. Um, you can see it starts at 2019, a 131, and it goes up in monthly intervals from there. So 2019 all the way up to 2023, 04. So this year, but there's a there's a bit of a lag in the Zillow data on the on the 
net a profit. So depending on when you're watching this, this is the most recent month that has been uploaded to NASDAQ's data link. Um, and then we need to initialize profit. We're going to use a change point of 0 0.9. Um, we're going to need the change point later, so that'll come in handy. The nice thing about the profit package is that you can include holidays for the U.S., which I think is really cool. We can add seasonality using the monthly. This would be a pretty standard way of setting up your profit to train or to fit on your training data, um, whether it's the best way to do it for this data, you know, is, is up for debate. You could probably change this depending on your data, of course. So then we're going to fit it and we're going to call a data frame. So another cool feature about profit is that you can make a future data frame uh, and store that in this variable here using the length of our test data in the frequency of a month, which is what our, you know, time series is set at. When we take a look at the future, you can see it has it going from 96 all the way to 2023. So pretty much the entire set of our um, our training data. And we can predict using the DF future of our profit and plot it. And you can see just before 2020, sometime in like 2019, um, is where the data stops and you can see it's forecasting up out to kind of present day where we are now. Um, you get the upper bands here, you get the median or, or mean here, and then you get the lower band here. So it's forecasting somewhere in here um, for our data set. And we kind of know that it, it really does skyrocket and once we hit 2020, the weird thing about MetaProfit too is that it includes two graphs, but I don't think these are any different. So I don't know why it does that. And when we call the columns, you'll see there's a ton of columns and you can see they're mostly holidays. And we're not really super interested in the holidays because it's not like real estate values change pretty drastically for Christmas Day or Independence Day, et cetera. Um, if you were doing like an e-commerce forecasting or some kind of retail forecasting, obviously this would become a lot more important. But we really just want to hold on to a certain column values here. So, um, oh, interesting. I kind of skipped ahead here, but this cell here shows the change points to the plot. Um, and the change point is just where in the data set where the slope changes. So we can see that the slope changes quite a several times in the 2000 or before 2000, and then it's on a straight for a good while. It just goes on the same slope. And so, yeah, you get the idea that each line represents a change point in the slope of the value line. Another cool feature about MetaProfit is you can plot the components. So here we have our plot. We can see our holidays and the the yearly, uh, I guess, seasonality and the monthly. And you can see it doubles it again for some reason, which I'm not sure why it does that. But uh, yeah, again, these aren't super interesting for us with this data set because real estate isn't going to have the sort of seasonality or it's not going to be affected by holidays all that much. But it's good for you to know, and it's really easy to call this because you don't have to use a separate package to get the decomposition. You can just plot the components that profits already taken account for. And so we're only interested in these columns that MetaProfit has used. Um, so we have the, 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 the dates and then the Y hat, the Y hat lower and the Y hat upper. And then we're going to store those selected columns into a new data frame called DF prediction. And we're going to merge it with our test data so that we can plot the sort of what meta is forecasted versus the out of sample true values. So that's going to make more sense when I actually plot it here. And it says gold price because I initially did this on gold, but I found that housing was a bit more interesting to look at. Um, but you can see this is where the forecast is. The upper band is the red line. The, you know, the Y hat is here, this yellow line, and the green is the lower. 
and the blue is the actual values. So you can see it's not super accurate. I mean, if you needed to make a decision point somewhere in here in the, the early 2022, this forecast would be quite wrong. Um, but, you know, if it was present day and you were betting that it was really up here in the upper level of the forecast, then you would be closer, but you'd still be wrong. So this forecast probably isn't the best to be using for real use cases. Um, and there's some ways that we can fine tune MetaProfit so that it works. Another thing to keep in mind is that this is a pretty odd pattern for the time series altogether. Like this is totally flat here, which, um, you know, is, is in that 2022 era, right? Which is sort of abnormal for any kind of time series. And then it drops dramatically, you know, it was started in nearing 2023. So kind of an odd uh, signal pattern here that the model would have to adjust for that isn't present in other areas of the data that it's been trained on. So it's sort of understandable why it's not capturing this here. Another thing that the model isn't taken into account is obviously the pandemic when things went crazy. And then in 2021, we just had this bull run on real estate prices that we haven't really adjusted for since. So, you know, maybe if we started training and we started the forecast over here, we would be able to capture this sort of run uh, more accurately. So one thing that we can do is cross validate and get the performance metrics for, for our data. Um, it has a built-in feature for that and we can plot the cross validation metrics. Um, it's sort of confusing this part here. Um, in the documentation, what it's saying is it's going to create 81 forecasts with cutoffs between 1999 and 2018. Um, and that's based on providing the values here. So we're trying to forecast a horizon of 90 days um, using the initial 1050 days of training um, over a period of 90 days. So it it's sort of hard to understand, but when I plot it, it'll sort of make more sense. But uh, this might take some time, so let's just hang out here until it's done. Okay, cool. So looks like it's done. It's done a lot of computing. This is what the data frame looks like. It shows the Y hat, the Y hat lower, the upper, the actual Y or the value, and then the cutoff period. So we can set the DS to daytime and plot it. And it's going to look a little weird. It looks like this. And you can see that the that the values or the Y hat is a lot more on point. You can see it's a little bit weird. It's made a ton of different forecasts rolling forward through the data. Um, problem with this is that this might be a little overfitted, so it's not exactly going to be like super helpful. And then you can see that it's only made forecasts over a smaller period of dates. Um, I still need to dial in on, uh, you know, these these variables up here in the cross validation, and even from the documentation, I'm still not exactly sure if this is just a diagnostics package, and and it's not really meant to use as a um, as a as a model itself or a forecast itself, or just a, a better way of fine tuning the the actual model up here, right? The forecast up here. Um, so I do need to learn a little bit more because the documentation seems a little little lacking on that level. It's been a little difficult to find more concrete examples to help me out there. But one thing else that we can do is look at the performance metrics of that cross-validation. And if we look at the average absolute performance error, we can see across different horizon forecasts what that value would be, um, as long as a bunch of other metrics here that can help us uh, fine-tune the model itself. So that's this, to me, is the more important aspect to the CV and less, less this. 
plotting up here. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. But um, yeah, you can use these metrics here to fine tune the model. Um, and if we plot the average absolute performance error, this blue line is the actual MAPE itself, the average, and then these very faint little dots are the distance errors from that line. So um, yeah, you can sort of plot this and see what it is, and you can play around with the, and then you can play around with the cross-validation uh, values here to get different results and plot it and, and redo the, the training and testing. So I, I hope this was a good introduction to MetaProfit. I really like MetaProfit, and I'm going to be exploring other pieces of data in, in NASDAQ to see if I can find something a little bit more appropriate for this tool. Um, let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.